one of the things I like to do is collect my water. Now, I got a little small pump, a half horsepower pump thrown down in my creek that draws water up, and that's how I'm watering everything right now. Now, you might not have that luxury, but this is what I like to do with that, okay? I just don't water everything with that every day. This is something I also do. Like right now, while my pump is out there going to town, let me show you this. While my pump is out there going to town, out there on the bananas and everything, I can't use it up here, but I need it. It's burning hot, it's 100 degrees today. So what I also do is I store a lot of my water. Now, whether you collecting them in a rain, from rainwater, you got a pump like this, even if you just taking some from out of your house, this is one of the things that I like to do. I like to keep my water stored up. I got tanks in my garage, and I got tanks out here on my back porch. And I'm gonna show you. Now this is a 55 gallon drum right here. That's always there and it's always covered up with all so much garbage you can't really never see it. But these two here, the two clear ones, I keep those filled. And the thing those are filled with is clean water. Okay, I keep my house water in those. Sometimes I use them for the garden because after about 30 days or something like that, I use them out here on all of this stuff out here. Just keep recycling, recycling. Put a little cap full of bleach. That's a 30 gallon drum right there. Both of those are 30 gallons a piece. Put a cap full of bleach in there and you ain't got to worry about it algae and mold because the sun going through that clear stuff is going to algae up real quick and mold up real quick i keep those out here for all of this stuff now i got four more in my garage and i got one more of these big uh black 55 gallon drums in my garage too and a whole bunch of five gallon water jugs i do that because it ain't just about the garden either if we have a storm or emergency, I want to know that my family got some fresh water somewhere, you know, stored up just in case. And we get a lot of those storms down here. So that's what happens. All right. So this is what I do right here. Keep a lid over it because if you don't put a, if you don't put a lid on it, what's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of frogs. You're going to get a lot of insects in there, dying in there, lizards and then dying in there. It's, it's good for the plants but it's gonna to go to stinking and turn into water, okay? So you don't want that. Now the water that I have in this 55 gallon barrel came from out there on the lake. So it's a little brown, it's almost like it got 5.11 in it, like I said the other day. Okay, let me show you what it looks like. Just showing you a little piece of this that I never get a chance to show you. Just take an old picture that I've had for years. Let me, let me get you all the way in here. See that? All that is like brownish water. That look like 511, don't it? Like I poured 511 in there. Trust and believe it ain't. Because if I did, we would have a mess. So I'm going to set this down for a second. And get y'all back in here with me, okay? So all I do... Is water everything with that every day and every time this barrel gets half full I just fill it right back up I bring that hose from the from the creek down there I just fill that right back up and I hit everything with that they don't need much they just need enough to get through this heat and get through this day all my experiments and here's those uh elephant ears that i showed y'all the other day they bouncing back already i planted those that same day i did that video and all they need is to be water the bananas too they look bad but trust and believe this is all i'm worried about that main one spiraling out okay So this is what I ask you to do. You might want to consider trying to store some water, not just for your garden, but for your own emergency consumption too. Now here's, I'm gonna show you something else 
like you don't have a creek you don't have a lake back there here's one more way you can get that water real easy okay okay this is one of the other things that i i do and i used to do but i needed this space for something else okay you might not have a lake you might not have a creek nothing like that but this is something that you can do all everybody cheap super cheap this is what you want to do right here check it out no not the chickens but see this barrel i made them a waterer that's so they can always have something to drink that's 30 gallons of water that i don't have to keep worrying about them all the time but this is what i'm really trying to show you right here up top <laughs> they picking on each other up top here is a is a cheap gutter system that's where I keep my gutters right there. I put this gutter system up there from uh, Home Depot and it's the, the vinyl gutters. And it only costed me something like $35 to put this whole thing up. And I had it coming down here and I had it going into an IBC tote, one of those big 300 gallon totes. And it used to come up to there. That's where that used to sit. And that was my water collection. But now I have... Uh, now that I have this watering for the chickens and I have sprinklers and everything else, I really didn't need it, so I sold it. But this is what you can do. Set you up a quick a quick rain gutter system. It's easy to clip on, on onto your house and put you either, you don't have to buy a big 300 gallon tote. You can find you a 55 gallon garbage can you know, at one of these big box stores, that'll run you something like $35 or something like that. And you will be golden. It ain't always got to be a... Now here we go. One of the best ways to keep your trees moist and keep them watered, this one right here is not suffering. Look at how healthy that banana look out here. And I think y'all already guessed where I'm going next. Another way to conserve water in your garden, this is a must, okay? This is a simple must. Right there wood chips this helps hold on to the water and the moisture in your soil this this stuff out here has not been watered like i've been trying to water everything else that's because it's all being locked into these wood chips and as these wood chips break down it lets that moisture out into the soil look at here i got a pepper here i know it blends in with the rest of these weeds but this pepper I don't water that pepper. I got them all down the row because I let them sit out here and these wood chips do all the stuff for me. Look at that. See, yes, it's dry at the top, but down here, that's where the action takes place. It's still moist down here. That's what's keeping that little fella alive. So trust and believe it's other ways to conserve water you just don't have to have a water source you also have to have a way to conserve it to keep it because even though i have a way to water everything i can't be here every day doing this now here's another way to conserve water in your garden close planting as you can see all of my fruit trees are planted about five feet to six feet apart all of them well that's for a couple of different reasons one of them most of all is to hold on to water to conserve water when I'm watering like this I don't have to bounce all over the place I can hook that sprinkler like that up which most of us have and I can water about six or seven trees at one time because it's going in a circle I don't have to bounce from tree to tree to tree to tree. And also, if you have like a drip hose, look how this will work. Let's get to the end of the line here. 
if I had a drip hose, all I would have to do is lay it right down the line of either one of these trees, that set or that set over there, or even that set of apples out there and let that drip straight down the line. That way you don't have to use as much hose. Your plants can get more water by closely planting everything, dense planting. I even do this in my tropical circle. I keep everything real dense in there and I do keep a lot of those water type weeds in there because it's easier to water everything. Even with my big sprinkler system, my yard sprinkler system, it's easy to water everything like this. But I'm still getting the same production from all of my cannas, bananas, persimmons, everything in here. All my elephant ears, they're getting the same production. And I don't have to keep bouncing around all around my land trying to wonder if it's been watered or not. So close planting is important too. A lot of people don't think it works. <laughs> I'm proving them wrong right here. Okay. I'm proving them wrong right here. Right here, they say don't don't plant your your trees so close. They'll struggle with the roots. The roots will struggle and battle each other for nutrients. Look, we'll give them more nutrients, give them more water. They won't struggle. Okay, it's that simple. And if you one of those gardeners just looking for land and trying to start a homestead and have your own and make it your own way, when you looking for land, one of the things, one of the first things you need to look for before you even see how many acres it is. The first thing, see what kind of water source you have. Is it city water? Because if it's city water, you in the same boat. You kind of screwed. You want to make sure, is there a well nearby? A lake? A stream? Something on that land that's giving you a natural resource of water. That will save you tons of money. The land I used to live on before this, I had a well. And it was like it was bottomless. And I used to water everything with that well. And it didn't cost me hardly nothing. It cost me the power to run the pump. But other than that, just like I'm doing this here, other than that, the water was free. And when that water sinks down into the ground, all it does is go right back down into that well. It does this whole cycle, ends up back in that well. So what you want to make sure of when you out there looking for land, one of the first most important things you need to be worried about what kind of water source do you have because that's important if you're talking about growing your own food and uh sustaining yourself and your family one of the things people just never they just never think about is how am i going to water all of this stuff i want this big garden i want to grow corn i want to grow bananas bananas take tons of water people don't know that bananas take tons of water Elephant ears take tons of water. And when your fruit trees come into production and they actually produce apples and pears, that's the time, oh, it's your citrus, that's the time to amp up your water uh, regimen. You know, when they ain't really got no uh, fruit on them, you kind of want to be cool with the water. But once they those blooms come and they get pollinated and you got some fruit coming, you want to amp that water up because what happens is that water is making your fruit bigger and plumper and juicier so that's why you amp that water consumption up and if you don't have a water source you in some trouble so if you get it off city water that's costing you big money every time you cut that dog on sprinkler on so think about that now i got one more for you okay if you don't have a water source you don't have a natural source of water you don't have a stream, a creek, a well, or anything like that, like I do, here's one more alternative, okay? You can also dig yourself a nice small pond. Dig yourself a nice small pond in your yard if you got enough space. It don't gotta be huge. It don't gotta be giant. Just big enough that if something went down, a mercy went down, you got some water. Or you can water your garden how you wanna water it. You got to think about how many gallons you think you might be using in your garden every day. Take that information and you dig your well that big. Well, your pond. And you know what? Just for beautif beautifications, throw some koi fish in there. Throw some fish in there. It don't got to be a big giant pond. And that way, 
You know what I'm saying? You got free water right there. The rain gonna keep it filled up. Every blue moon, you might have to fill it up a little bit in a drought like we got here. But for the most part, you got a solid source of water. And for some people that keep on wanting to get rid of their swimming pools, you might purchase a house and they got a pool on it. You're like, I don't, I don't want no pools. You know, our kids grown and gone. We don't really want a pool. Before you get rid of that swimming pool, before you fill it in with rock, you might want to think about that. You know, you might want to turn half of it into something like a root cellar. And you might want to brick the other half in and make it a smaller water container. So I, I know a lot of people, and I, watch, I don't know a lot of people, but I've seen a lot of people fill their whole pool in. Oh my God, what a waste. You could have turned half of that into a root cellar. And the other half, you could have kept it into some kind of water containment system for your land. So you don't have to pay for public water. You got to use your head before you make these major moves. Because right now, you know, if y'all don't know how scarce water is right now. Come on now. See how hot it is? It's spring and it's 100 degrees every day. Everywhere. People are sweating in the north. So I'm telling you all, one of the healthiest ways to keep your garden going, you plan on having a small garden or a big garden, is to find your water source. Look for a water source and make that water source happen and work for you. All right? Because you can feed your tree all you want to. You can feed it organically or chemically. But nothing matters if you don't water your freaking garden. All right? I just want to throw that at y'all. I know this was a long video, but it was really important. It was on my mind because I'm struggling out here trying to water my giant garden and all this land. All right? So, if you got any questions, please leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Left Farmer 73. Now, you know I love you.